we all heard of Wi-Fi and Zigbee, and Alexa, Google Home or Apple HomeKit, and Home Assistant, I.O. Broker or Node-RED, and maybe Matter or Thread. But how do they relate, today and in the future, and how does this affect us? Let's have a closer look. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. All these names are a mouthful. So, as always, we have to start with defining the users and the use cases. Then we have to bring some order into the subject, continue with the details, and finally bring everything together in a judgment and recommendations. These days, we want to sense our environment, display its status and history in proper diagrams, let the automation decide the actions, and ensure that things are correctly executed. Best without even knowing that something happened. Like this statement made already in 1911. The promise that lured me into computers 50 years ago. I always wanted that the computer does the boring work. This definition is too broad for this video. So we restrict the users to us and the use case to our homes. Many use cases also apply to office buildings and the like, of course. To save time, I asked ChatGPT about the topic, but it did not want to answer. So I have to do the work and bring some order into the topic. For engineers, the order usually is called architecture. I will use a model borrowed from the well-known OSI model. But my model has only three layers. Application layer, network layer, and physical layer. Home Assistant, Apple's Smart Home, Google Home, and so on are applications that interact with us and do some automation if we want. They are probably the only that obey my orders without objections. What a joy! Looking at the number of sold devices, this seems to be extremely attractive for others. But I digress. The internet traffic based on IP, including TCP and UDP, are placed on the network layer. And finally, Wi-Fi, BLE, Zigbee or LoRa focus on the physical layer. Cables belong to the physical layer too. But who wants cables in today's world? So we concentrate on wireless. I know my definitions are not exact, and most of the above names cover more than one layer. This is one of the biggest problems. Nothing is compatible and nothing works together. We must use a secret trick to solve the problem. Why secret? Because only we smart guys know it and can use applications like Home Assistant or I.O. Broker. As we all know, these applications can interact with all the various products around our homes and integrate them into one system. Sometimes supported by the manufacturers, sometimes hacked by brilliant people. The rest of humanity has to decide on one ecosystem of the big manufacturers and then are trapped for the foreseeable future. Why did this happen? because the significant players mentioned above have a track record of locking us in their ecosystems, a discipline they master to perfection. Unfortunately, something unforeseen happened to them. Home automation was created by others, they slept too long, and now they are only smaller players. In addition, the market is not progressing as expected, because consumers do not embark if they see that they can only use a fraction of the available devices supported by one or the other ecosystem. Similar situations also happened in the past in consumer electronics, before common standard existed. I just name a few. Video cassettes, CDs or MP3s. Only after establishing a standard, the market took off. Now they want to repeat the same trick and call it matter and 
Gerät. We hope the trick works again, because three big companies are behind the standard. The future will tell. You see, I'm a bit skeptical, particularly about the speed of implementation. I think these companies and their bosses must significantly curb their egos to agree on a common standard. A small remark about the names given to these new standards. It hardly could be worse in the times of search engines. Just search for matter or thread and look at the results. You get a lot of things, but not much about home automation. Not a masterpiece. In our architecture, we place matter in the top and thread in the middle layer. But we already had the application layer occupied by the proprietary apps. Easy, we add a proprietary layer on top. So we know these new standards purpose, to develop the market and bring the major players back where they think they belong. But we can also profit. Why? Architectures only work if the interfaces between the layers are defined and stable. This is called interoperability. Our architecture has three interfaces, between the physical and the network layer, between the network and the application layer, and between the application layer and the proprietary layer. Because of the proprietary level, Matter does not offer a UI or extended automation. This is good for everybody. The big boys can protect their market share and probably still offer some perks if we use their Matter hardware and we can choose whatever home automation software we like. Let's talk about the interfaces and start with the top. Matter nodes expose devices that contain endpoints like a dimmable light. This device has two cluster servers, one to switch the light on or off, and the second to set a particular illumination level. A third could also be color. And each cluster server offers attributes and commands to manipulate the attributes. So far, so good. As in BLE, only defined clusters can be used with matter in a standardized way. Later we will see what this means for us. Endpoint 0 contains administrative information like the software level, by the way. Because Matter works on the application layer, Endpoints can also offer cluster clients to issue commands to cluster servers. So it is possible to send commands directly from a Matter switch to a Matter bulb. An exciting feature if our overall server or the Wi-Fi is down. This is not how things run today, where our home automation software does all the dispatching. So it will need a lot of redesign to use this function. Ultimately, your automation script must be shifted down to the distributed systems. Not easy, mainly if every matter device can go offline at any time. Still an interesting feature for the future. Leaving aside this node-to-node -node communication and automation, nothing is new for the top layer and can easily be adapted and integrated. Quickly, another question arises. What happens with all my current devices? The idea is to bridge existing devices into the matter world. I will not cover this model because I think it will not be important because the bridging will be done on a higher level in the home automation software. At least for the guys living in the free world. Home Assistant already offers a matter integration like all other interfaces. For us, matter is just another integration. Nothing to write home about. We can already integrate most currently available devices and many smaller manufacturers provide Home Assistant integration as a marketing tool. With Matter, however, things are very different. Because the integration is done in Matter, only the manufacturer can do it. And even worse, a good enough Matter standard has to exist for every device. Otherwise, no data model exists and the device cannot be used. So let's have a look at the currently supported devices. Light bulbs and light switches, plugs and outlets, locks, thermostats, 
blinds and shades, sensors, television and streaming video players, wireless access point and bridges. Manufacturers of other devices have to wait for a future release. Next on the roadmap are home security cameras, garage door controller sensors, indoor air quality monitors and purifiers, smoke and CO2 detectors. These are pretty simple devices compared to my solar inverter, for example. So you can imagine how long it will take until all our home's machines speak matter. Anyway, let's continue with the next level, networking. Here, matter currently supports Wi-Fi, DLE and Thread. DLE is only used for provisioning the devices, not for interaction. So we have two very different protocols available. But if you believe the glossy leaflets, they all work with IP version 6. We will later see that this is not entirely true. We all know Wi-Fi, but what is Thread? If you know SIGPI, you pretty much know Thread because it uses the same protocol called 802.15.4 on the physical layer. This protocol also works on 2.4 GHz as Wi-Fi of most IoT devices and BLE. So what is the point of using a third standard on similar frequencies? Like Zigbee, Thread is for battery-operated devices with extremely low power consumption. They restrict the data volume and sleep most of the time to reach this goal. As with SIGPI, they can build meshes, and the network consists of minimal thread devices and full thread devices. Most of the MTDs will be of the category sleepy end devices that wake up when an event occurs. Examples are PIR sensors or window alarms. Another category is the synchronized sleepy end device that regularly gets an update from the network and can sleep in between. Actuators that need to react fast can also be minimal end devices. But I assume most of these devices will be upgraded to a full end device or a router eligible end device. So not a lot of difference to SIGBI. But what is with the promised IP version 6? We all know that IPv6 is made for the Internet to address all devices on Earth and in space. So already its address information is 16 bytes long, longer than many IoT messages with all information. And because each transferred bit costs energy and airtime, Thread does not use real IPv6, but IPv6 over low power wireless personal area networks. This is a protocol particularly adapted to the 802.15.4 networks. This is why we must have a protocol translation done by border routers to transfer six low pan messages to the internet. Also, what looks to be a significant advantage on glossy paper is a technical decision and not too crucial for us. However, a significant difference is how thread devices are commissioned. With SIGBI, you just press a button long enough near a coordinator and your device works in its mesh. With thread, you need an additional commissioner for connecting a device to your network. As said before, commissioning is done via BLE. You decide if this is important for you. Another advantage of a thread mesh is that it is self-healing. That means if a node in a mesh disappears, the mesh chooses a different route and the user does not feel anything. Also something available with SIGBI since the beginning. However, thread allows several border routers that connect the thread network with Wi-Fi and thread devices can be connected to several domains. With SIGBI, devices were only connected to one network using such a dongle as a coordinator. Also here, you decide if this is an essential feature for you. All in all, Thread is very similar to SIGBI. It uses the same radios, 
a very similar network structure and you will not feel any difference for small networks like the one of a typical home. Also, many manufacturers already support the Zigbee standard and we can mix and match their devices already now. I assume this new provisioning will have advantages for large installations like office buildings. And maybe over time, device management like software updates over the air will become easier than with the current Zigbee devices. Something we might be interested in. However, one thing is essential. Even if they use the same physical layer, Zigbee and Thread devices are incompatible. In our systems, their compatibility is achieved by Home Assistant et al., where Zigbee and Matter networks are implemented as integrations. A long time ago, Google created OpenThread with a very permissive open source license. Others like Nordic Semiconductors or Espressive contributed to the project and everybody can use it for their purpose without cost. Only if you want to use the thread logo, you must pass tests and pay a fee. As said before, Matter can integrate Wi-Fi devices in addition to thread devices. The probably most important device class using Wi-Fi in home automation is cameras. They produce much network traffic that thread cannot handle. Also cameras do not need to sleep. So here, Wi-Fi is the perfect physical layer. We now have a complete picture of our preferred home automation server, the Matter environment and all the existing devices in parallel. The current devices use many protocols for communication as well as a multitude of data and data structures for communication. Matter devices use Thread and Wi-Fi for communication. All devices only need one integration into home automation because the standardization is done inside the Matter framework. Very similar to BLE, where we can use the standardized GAT profiles for all sorts of services. So what does this mean for us makers? Using our preferred integration platforms like Home Assistant, IO Broker, Node-RED, etc., we can already build our home automation integrating many different devices. We solve the problem on a different level, but it works without Matter and Thread. Because Home Assistant and others started to support Matter, we can play with it and, if we buy new devices, see if we get a device already supporting Matter. Remember to purchase a border router with your first Thread sensor. Newer Apple or Google Home Automation devices will do this job. Keep in mind that the standard evolves fast and maybe your Matter device will not keep up and has to be replaced over time. For existing devices, there is no need to change. Matter devices will not offer any advantages in the next future. Hopefully we can start programming Matter devices using Nordic or Espressive chips. We could already begin with an ESP32 and Wi-Fi because we already get a library for that. So far, I never was able to create a really low power connected ESP32 device. So I will try Thread as soon as I get the ESP32 H2 and Arduino IDE support. Otherwise, I'm not in a hurry for Matter or Thread and I will save my money for later. This was all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.